Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. I want to begin with RDNA 2, as there is a lot of information which has leaked over the past few days. In yesterday's video, I detailed that AMD are planning to launch and announce three GPUs. So we will see the 6900 XT, the 6800 XT, and the 6800 announced um, on the 28th, with lower-end SKUs like the 6700 series launching later, most likely early next year. Furthermore, the clock frequency for boost is 2300-ish megahertz, and of course I have already covered many times the number of compute units and stuff. Well, the good news is we actually have further confirmation of this, and it's courtesy of videocards.com. They are stating that the Narve 21 XTX die will be used in the 6900 XT with 80 compute units and a game clock of 2040 megahertz, a boost frequency of 2330, and features 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory at 16 Gbps. Now, what's interesting here is that they are stating that this is a flagship product available in limited quantities, but, and this is the weird part, it's an AMD exclusive. A couple of my sources had hinted that AIBs may not get um, certain products, but perhaps the best uh, the best example of this was actually the fact that AIBs at this point still had not been given the specifications of the highest end SKU, the ATA compute units, and so we were getting this weird mismatch of performance information and specs from leaks which were kind of well, let's just face it, internal from AMD and from AIBs, and that was always kind of confusing. But this is apparently the reason why AMD are only going to be offering their own variant, which I guess you could think of essentially as the Founders Edition. I don't necessarily know if I like that, but maybe it's because of yield purposes or a dozen other different characteristics, uh, factors, I don't know. But this is allegedly what the reason has been. The 6800 XT features 72 compute units, again, that was pretty well understood at this point with 16 gigabytes of memory. The clock frequency is lower though. Uh, the game clock is just 2015 megahertz with 2250 on the boost frequency. And finally, we have the 6800. This has 64 compute units and again comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. All of these cards are running at 16 Gbps with a 256 bit bus. The major down, um, the, the, the downside here is that the clock frequency is reduced even further, 1815 to game clock and 2105 to the boost. So you may ask yourself, well, why the hell are the memory configurations identical across all three of those SKUs? 256-bit uh, bus or with 16 GBPS memory. So what gives? Because that's a lot of difference, like you're asking the same bus configuration, same memory configuration, same amount of bandwidth to feed either 64 compute units or 80 compute units, that's quite a difference. Well, some of you may have guessed it already, it comes down to the infinity cache which I've linked, uh, sorry, leaked previously. Um, with the top end SKU having 128 megabytes and obviously it scales down depending on the SKU itself. So. Perhaps another reason that we see the clock frequency change as well, while well, one is probably yields, but two, clock frequency almost certainly has a pretty profound impact in the performance of the GPU, not just because of fill rates and other such things, but also because it has most likely a direct um, link to the frequency of the Infinity Cache itself. And obviously, if the Infinity Cache is running faster, that helps increase performance. I would be very fascinated to have access to the 6900 XT and the 6800 XT and do some uh, elaborate testing across different resolutions and different frame rates just to see how things scale, particularly, and this is 
you know, kind of obvious, but particularly if you started to mess around with memory frequency versus clock frequency of the GPU. Um, a good example would be to get the GPU running at like, let's say, 2 gigahertz exact, and then have the memory run at 14 and 16 GPPS, and also overclock the memory if at all possible, and perform those two tests on the 6900 XT, the 6800 XT, and then also see what happens if you run them at kind of parity. I had also leaked that the 6900 XT also seems to overclock fairly well. I'm hearing that it does overclock insanely well, in fact. But that, I was told, is going to be down to users or, alternatively, AIBs. So, it, yeah, kind of interesting. The 6700 XT and the 6700, based on Narve 22, um, the 6700 XT has 40 compute units and... Um, 192-bit bus, and then uh, most likely we're going to be seeing a cut for the 6700. There's been no specifications leaked, but um, I think it's 36 CU um, with a slightly narrower bus. We're hearing it's got 10 gigabytes of memory, as we kind of uh, went over quite elaborately a few days ago. But yeah, um, that card is not launching until early next year. Again, this matches up very well with what I've leaked in the past, that AMD did want to launch the 6700 later. I'm not quite sure why that is, honestly. Um, I think a lot of it is to do with messaging, and AMD really wanting to have cards which essentially compete with NVIDIA's flagship products, like the 60, uh, sorry, the uh, 3080, the 3070, and even the 3090. And again, according to my information, the 6900 XT does actually compete very well with the RTX 3090, albeit with some games running better or some games uh, running slower. And uh, yeah, Another interesting thing is that I was contacted by a previously very good source, and uh, they told me that the GPUs are not over 300 watts, which is what Igor's lab is reporting. Now, Igor generally has very good information, but according to what I'm told, the reference XTX design for Narve 21 is 280 watts. So again, I'm not saying Igor is wrong, but one of my sources is telling me that the power consumption is less. I think the most obvious thing to do is to just wait and see um, officially what actually the numbers are, just like with any of this stuff. Like, I wouldn't recommend buying a card or putting your money down or pre-ordering anything until we actually have confirmation on the um, performance at the end of the day, and we don't even know the prices yet. With that said, given what I leaked yesterday in terms of the uh, letter to um, retailers from AMD, it does seem like it's at least possible that availability will be reasonable, because again, if you missed yesterday's video, I'll link it in, uh, in the description, but they are asking uh, retailers to do things like um, put measures in place to prevent bots, put measures in place so that customers can't um, order like 2,000 cards to the same address and stuff like that, which obviously is a really good thing um, for users who have been, let's face it, extremely frustrated. But um, the thing is, AMD can't actually enforce that in law, to my understanding. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but I, I've it might also depend upon the region, but I think in the USA at least, they cannot enforce that in law. So they could, though, encourage them, because let's face it, if AMD are asking a retailer, don't do this, while they can't penalize them in terms of uh, sue them or something like that, they could put them on a lower priority for restock. So maybe a retailer would be more encouraged to follow those guidelines, but whether they will and whether this really will uh, prevent the problem for, uh, you know, actually obtaining the hardware, who the hell knows? And there is also another interesting thing which has emerged, and this comes to us via Tim Episec on Twitter. I'll again link it in the video description. Are we being debated because Geekbench results for the 5800, 5900, and 5900X have actually popped up? 
And these clock frequencies, in fact, with the 5950X, we're getting just a smidgen over 5 gigahertz. So they are actually faster than what AMD specs are. Unfortunately, there are several problems with these numbers. The first is that we don't know if this is like user overclocking or some other thing. We don't know if it's the um, Geek, uh, Geekbench itself misreporting the numbers. I'm not saying that this is the case, but who knows. And the final possibility is we have PBO, um, which has been, again, artificially inflating the numbers. So it's quite difficult to be 100% certain. Harikazi on Twitter has also done a really good job putting together benchmarks for several different uh, processors in Geekbench, including the 5950X. And these are both single and multi-core results. I won't read out all of these because there's a lot of them, but you can see that if we compare the 5950X against the 3950X, well, there isn't really any comparison. The 3950X is scoring around 1300 points compared to 1650, again I'm rounding up or down the figures here, of the 5950X. And the 5950X for multi-core uh, core performance is scoring 15831 compared to the 3950X which is scoring just a smidgen under 14100. Even more impressive is that it completely and utterly decimates, destroys, and annihilates the performance of the 10980XE in multi-thread. Uh, there's not even a point in comparing it in single core with the 10980XE because the clock frequency is so much lower. And against the 10900K, not only is the 5950X beating it in single core, but it is, well, yeah... Can't put it politely, so I won't even bother uh, with the multi-core score. Um, again, this is just Geekbench. So, obviously, across a wider range of applications, we will have to wait and see how performance actually ends up. But if this is at all similar across multiple applications, and given AMD's internal benchmarks, it seems like it is, I don't think that a lot of folks are going to want to purchase anything else other than AMD for their CPU for a while. I mean, yeah, with GPUs, okay, NVIDIA have a really good product, and we can argue all day long about that, but I don't really see any redeeming features at the moment, at the moment, excuse me, for Intel, and that's really sad. Um, I know I keep saying this, but I really want competition in the market, and I am happy that AMD are on top, because that's that's great for us you know, to kind of have that turnaround. But I was hoping that at least some point soon, uh, AMD would be under pressure. Rocket Lake, from the looks of it, is roughly, as we covered yesterday, roughly on par in single-core performance uh, on CPU-Z, but it still seems to be slightly behind uh, uh, Zen 3, assuming uh, Intel can't crank things up. After all, we are looking at engineering samples. And... Uh, yeah, multi-thread performance, obviously, AMD just are way, of, way in front because of the core count. I've also got some more stuff um, for GPUs. So this is an exclusive. I actually have some release dates and stuffs for the other RTX series GPUs. I've already um, leaked, of course, the prices of the 3060 Ti, but um, I just want to quickly go over some of the other GPUs. So the 3060 Ti is still looking like it's going to be the 17th of November for release. That's the street date. The 3060 is a 6 gigabyte card, and it is going to launch early Q, uh, sorry, early January. I'm seeing the 7th of January next year. So obviously that's not at all planned to go against the RX uh, 6700 series. And uh, the 3050 is another uh, six gigabyte card, but there's also going to be a four gigabyte card too. I don't have an exact release date for this, unfortunately. I only have a release window. Um, I'm being told possibly late January slash possibly February, depending on a plethora of factors. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting that we are seeing both AMD and NVIDIA prepare the 3060 and uh, 6700 series 
for very early next year. And I do understand that perhaps the cards like the 3080 and the 6800 XT and stuff get the most headlines. But looking at the uh, number of uh, users on the Steam hardware survey who were rocking cards like the GTX 1060 um, or the 2060 or, you know, equivalent AMD GPU insert here, I think it's fair to say that most people's budgets are going to be around that. So in terms of volume sold, these GPUs, such as the 3060, are definitely the cards that end up in most gamers' rigs. So the performance of those cards, in some ways, is actually more important than the flagship. The flagship actually gets you a lot of the headlines and a lot of the positive PR, but in terms of actual volume of sales, obviously the 3060, 3060 Ti, the 6700, 6700 XT, those are the cards that people are going to want to grab. Um, and I do wonder if NVIDIA will have an advantage in the hearts of some gamers because of DLSS. I think it's going to really depend on an upsampling tech on AMD's cards, if it's there and how good it is. Because if it's really good, even if it's slightly lower quality, I think people will be okay with it. Um, but if it's not there, if those rumours have been inaccurate, I think NVIDIA may actually sell really well with the 3060 because of DLSS. This is not in every game, but it is in quite a few. So the ability to run, even if you don't care at all about hardware-based ray tracing, and I think that um, DLSS uh, does make hardware RT kind of a viable option even on lower end cards but even if you are willing to turn those features off i think having dlss like two with um, a game like say death stranding or what have you um is going to be very appealing to gamers because obviously you can run uh titles at much higher resolutions i would be very curious too to see what the performance of the 3060 is and uh how well it does at like 1080p up sample to 1440p. It's going to be a very curious next couple of months in tech. To put it mildly, obviously um, we've got uh, over the next couple of months, we've got the AMD, um, we've got the AMD conference on the 28th, the RTX 3070 launch, which is basically the same date, the Ryzen 5000 launch, and then obviously, obviously the RX 6000. We've got the PS5 and Xbox launches, and then uh, tons of games. And then early next year, it seems that AMD and NVIDIA will be right back at each other's throats, uh, kicking each other's shins with the kind of mid-range options. And Rocket Lake is also rumoured to launch around March-ish, although there is conflicting evidence of that. Some people are saying it's earlier. Personally, I think it's March, but... Again, some folks are saying it's going to be February or January. I'm personally thinking it's going to be March. So, yeah, basically it's going to be very expensive in terms of tech. Uh, with all of that said, thank you very much for watching the video. The normal stuff, if you've enjoyed it, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.